One of the slabs from our 23,000-pound block of steel has become a strip 600 feet long and approximately 1 16th of an inch thick. The hot rolled strip is coiled or cut into sheets by this flying shear, which works as the strip is still in motion. Hot rolled sheets are made into thousands of products, including truck bodies, buses, freight cars, houses, tanks, pails, lockers, oil drums, and a wide variety of farm implements. After pickling and oiling, it goes through a series of cold reducing mills. Cold rolling produces thinner sheets and gives a more uniform thickness than is possible by hot rolling as well as a smoother and more highly polished surface. Cold rolled sheets are particularly suited for the production of automobile bodies and accessories and other products requiring pressing, forming, and stamping, such as kitchen cabinets, refrigerators, stoves, and other domestic appliances. Also office furniture, filing cabinets, and other office equipment. Another cold rolled steel product is tin plate from which tin cans are made. After the cold reduction, the strip is washed and dried, then annealed to soften the steel. Then it's put through a temper mill in which the strip is given the proper temper and shape to produce a flat sheet when sheared. In the standard process of tin coating, the strip is cut into sheets, pickled, and then passed through a bath of molten tin a controlled coating of which adheres to the surfaces. A recent development in tin plating is the electrolytic method in which cold rolled strip is tin plated by passing it through an electroplating bath. Here, an electric current deposits a thin coating of tin on both sides of the strip, which is later cut into sheets. During processing, sheets from both methods are carefully inspected for weight and possible imperfections. Feminine eyes are famous for their ability to spot the slightest flaw. Tin plate is used principally in the production of so-called tin cans, which are used for storing and preserving foods of various kinds, as well as chemicals, cosmetics, and innumerable products. Large quantities are used for bottle caps. Tin plate is also used for kitchen utensils, toys, and similar articles. Returning to the hot mill, we see other slabs being made into steel plates. First, they go through a series of roughing stands. The finishing stands complete the reduction, and we have plates from 3 16th to 3 quarter inch in thickness. Powerful end shears cut plates of the desired length. Steel plate is indispensable for storage tanks, pipelines, gas holders, boilers, and similar construction. For railway cars, ships, and hundreds of other industrial applications. Next we see an ingot of different shape and size that is to be made into one of the most widely used products in the industrial world, steel bars. First, the ingot is reduced to what's called a bloom. The bloom passes through a series of roll stands, further reducing the cross section and increasing the length. It emerges as a hot bar and is cut into what's known in the industry as billets in this flying shear. After being reheated, the billets pass through roughing stands, receive their final reduction in the finishing stands, and emerge as a bar of the desired size some 325 feet long.
After cooling, most bars are cut to desired length. Some still red hot are rolled into coils. Bars are used in practically every line of industry. They're forged into crankshafts, axles, bumper bars, springs, bolts and rivets, bars for agricultural implements, reinforcement bars used to strengthen concrete construction in buildings, bridges and dams, and for an infinite variety of other structural uses. This ingot does not look much like a railway rail, does it? Let's see how modern mechanical ingenuity makes the transformation. In the bloomer, it's passed back and forth between the rolls. Then cut into blooms, each of which may produce two or three rails. After reheating, roughing rolls reduce the cross section and increase the length. Then back and forth go the rail bars through three stands in the mill. Growing longer with each pass and smaller in cross section until they're reduced to the desired size. The last stand puts on the finishing touches and brings the rail to the required size and shape. Hot saws cut the rail to the proper length. The rails are given an artificial curving to compensate for the fact that the head of the rail, being hotter, cools more slowly than the base. To relieve strains and stresses, hot rails are cooled slowly and gradually during the critical period from approximately 900 degrees down to 300. This is done by placing the rails in insulated boxes in which the rate of cooling is controlled for about 15 hours. Over 38 million tons of steel rails are in service today in the nation's transportation systems. Blooms are also used in making a variety of structural shapes, which are formed in rolls specially designed for the purpose, different grooves for different structural shapes. In the finishing stands, the structural shape takes on its final form and emerges as an I-beam. Millions of tons of structural shapes are used in the frameworks of skyscrapers, factories, bridges, ships, railway cars, and other structural purposes. Such is the drama of steel. From the primitive furnaces, turning out a few pounds of crude metal after long hours of labor, to the modern steel mills of our country with the capacity of over 90 million tons of steel yearly, greater than the combined production of the rest of the world. Ten times as much steel is made and used as the total of all other metals combined. It's as vital to modern civilization as air and water are to life. In the home, steel provides countless necessities, ranging from hairpins to kitchen stoves. In transportation, all the way from spikes to streamlined trains. On the farm, from hose to combines. In construction, from nails, to skyscrapers. In industry, steel tools and machinery make practically everything produced from cigarettes to diesel engines. And for the future, with steel scientists and engineers working as a team, ever striving for new methods, new products, and new uses, it can be confidently predicted that steel will continue to be the backbone of our civilization and our progress.